Coming up on KSC TV News, Fast Friends Greyhound Adoption in Swansea has taken in five new dogs from China. And see how the Academic and Career Advising Center is helping students with their future planning. We'll show you how puppies are learning behavioral skills at the Monadnock Humane Society. Those stories and more are coming your way. This is KSE TV News. Good evening and welcome to the March 22nd edition of KSE TV News. I'm Sarah Schufelt. And I'm Abigail Vassis. Thanks for tuning in this evening. Five dogs from halfway around the world have found a new home in Swansea. A local adoption group rescued these dogs from the Chinese meat trade. KSC TV's Mackenzie Clark tells us how they got here. Rebel is one of the five dogs rescued from the Chinese meat trade. Fast Friends Greyhound Adoption Center in Swansea brought Rebel and four other dogs all the way from Beijing. Fast Friends Development Director Amy Roy says the rescue wouldn't have been possible without the organization's connections. Well, our director, Sharon Thomas, um, has contacts around the world. She's very connected in kind of the international rescue community. She got hooked up with um, this group in China, and they recently had seen a lot of greyhounds. They were outreaching for different places to take the greyhounds. Roy says the journey for these dogs was not easy. Just getting them here was one challenge, but getting them healthy again was another. We have one of them um, needs some surgery. She had had a broken leg when they found her at the meat market. Um, all the dogs were rescued from the meat trade. Few were taken right off the scales when they were being weighed for the value of their meat. All of the dogs were held in quarantine after crossing into the New Hampshire border. Despite the brutal journey they had to overcome, these dogs are happy to be in the care of people who love them. They were downstairs for a week and a half and it was just the five of them. And they did, you know, the first day they were all just really sleepy and, you know, just kind of catching up. But once their cycles adjusted, they were just super happy and excited. They've all been really friendly with people for everything that they've, you know, gone through. They are not afraid. They're not shy. They're just like lovely dogs. One thing Roy says she didn't expect to have to deal with, a language barrier. These dogs were raised in China and don't yet understand the English language. Roy says all the dogs are healthy and once they return to full health, they will be up for adoption. Mackenzie Clark, KSC TV. It will be a couple of months before the dogs are ready to go to their new forever homes. The National School Walkout to protest gun violence came to Keene last week. The Sentinel reports 150 students from Keene High School participated in the walkout. Students stood in silence for 17 minutes outside of the practice fields at Keene High School. The protest started at 10 a.m. Another event to protest gun violence is coming to Keene this weekend. On Saturday, Keene will join cities and towns across the country by hosting a March for Our Lives event. Keene's march starts at Central Square at 10 Saturday morning. The March for Our Lives is an event to spread awareness about gun control in the USA. Fire departments from several towns helped out Fire departments from several towns helped put out a house fire in Fitzwilliam Sunday morning. The Sentinel reports none of the residents or their pets were harmed in the incident. Firefighters had the fire under control by 1:45 a.m. and were able to leave the scene just before 4 a.m. Two Keene residents are being charged with endangering children after allegedly storing drugs and paraphernalia in their home. The Sentinel reports that Jonathan and Melissa Chiricciello received the misdemeanor charges Monday. The two also face additional felony charges for recent drug-related incidents. Jonathan Chiricciello was charged with alleged possession of crack cocaine and fentanyl with an intent to sell. New Hampshire is receiving $333,000 to help the state's response to the opioid epidemic. WMUR reports the money is from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Service Administration. Funds will be directed to programs that provide access to substance use screening, clinical evaluation, and more. The Chesterfield Historical Society has a fundraising deadline for purchasing a historic property. The Keene Sentinel reports that deadline is March 30th. 
The property is a house at the intersection of Routes 9 and 63 in Chesterfield. The Chesterfield Historical Society has wanted to buy the house for years to use it as a history museum for the town. The group hopes to raise $750,000 to purchase the stone house. Crafternoons at Keene State help students de-stress during the school week. Every Monday and Wednesday, students have an opportunity to take a break and do arts and crafts. Printmaking, knitting, zentangle, collage, and origami are just a few of the craft projects students can do to unwind. So the Office of Multicultural Student Support and Success is for everyone, uh, right? One of our huge parts of our mission is to build community across campus and across identity. Uh, and right, Craft or Noon isn't about any particular kind of folk, uh, but mostly just people who want to come together and be creative. Uh. Crafternoons are held at the Office of Multicultural Student Support on the second floor of the Young Student Center. Coming up after the break, we're looking ahead to life after graduation. We'll, sh we'll show you how academic and career advising is helping students search for jobs after college. You're watching KSC-TV. In less than a month, college seniors will be graduating. That means many of them are starting their job searches right now. KSC TV's Carrie Kelly tells us how the Academic and Career Advising Center is helping those students with that search. Here at Keene State, students have access to the Academic and Career Advising Center. The ACA helps students with their schedules, resumes, cover letters, and many more. There are many advisors in the ACA who are always ready to help students. Louise Ewing is an ACA advisor who tells us how the ACA helps students that are preparing to graduate and look for jobs. It's her job to help students connect what they've been studying in college with the possible career choices. So for the career, it's everything from if students don't know what they want to study or they love what they're studying, but they don't know what they want to do with it, we can talk about that. We and then we can also help them figure out how do they identify their worth and communicate that through resumes, cover letters, interviewing, networking with employers and alumni. Um, so really it's the full range. The center here does a really great job of assisting seniors with that. Kristen Brooks knows from that firsthand experience she graduated from KSC in 2011. The Career Center helped her build her resume. I would tell graduating seniors to take some time to really dedicate uh, developing their resume, making themselves marketable. It's really important to market the skills and all of the things that you've learned here at Keene State. Once that resume is done, the Career Center has resources like JobWise to help students find employers looking for talent. JobWise, definitely JobWise. It's the best site to find part-time work, full-time work, internships everything there is. Here at the Elliott Center is where the Academic and Career Advising Center is located. Students can come here and have their cover letters and resumes looked at. They can also check out other resources such as JobWise and the Internship Fair here on campus. I'm Carrie Kelly and this is KSC TV. Again, the ACA is located in the Elliott Center and students can go in at any time from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. After the break, we'll take a look at how man's best friend becomes a man's best trained friend at Puppy Play School. And we'll see what's coming up next week. You're watching KSC TV. Puppy so socialization is an essential part of a dog's development. KSE TV's Izzy Harris reports on how Monadnock Humane Society's Puppy Play School helps train our four-legged friends. <laughs> Are you Stacy Foran has a new best friend, Moxie. Stacy wants Moxie to be well socialized and trained. So, when the Monadnock Humane Society started Puppy Play School in August, Stacy jumped at the opportunity. We were one of the first first ones to enroll in their first ever puppy play school and it was it's just been a blessing ever since through this program puppies learn many behavioral skills like sit down come and potty training 
Bethany King has been working with the pups since the program first started. I really love getting the opportunity to socialize puppies. It's something that I take really seriously, so I'm very aware of how I'm interacting with the puppies all day long. This program is an opportunity for puppies to become socialized with exposure to different people, objects, textures, and sounds. It creates better pets and better pet owners. The puppies that come from Puppy Play School tend to play better with other dogs and listen and, and know their basic commands because we're reinforcing those with the families. They're learning how to how to manage the puppies. Experts say Puppy Play School also reduces the odds an adopted dog will get returned to the shelter. The more you can socialize the puppies now in a positive way, um, the more well-rounded they're going to be. So the likelihood of them having to be rehomed because of some behavioral problems like reactivity around other dogs or being overly fearful or shy really helps diminish that. Moxie is now a graduate of the Puppy Play School, and her pet parent, Stacy, is thankful for what Moxie learned in training. The socialization, learning the cues when a dog doesn't want to play, when he does want to play, how do you engage, all of those things. That started from the first week she was in the puppy play school and it continues on now on the doggy daycare side. Trainers say bringing dogs here to puppy play school is a small investment of time that can pay off with a lifetime full of rewards with a well-socialized, well-trained dog. Izzy Harris, KSU-TV. If you're interested in enrolling your dog in Puppy Play School, call the Madadnock Humane Society Boarding and Daycare Center at 603-352-9011. Again, that's 603-352-9011. Here's a look ahead at what we'll be telling you about next week on KSCTV News. The March for Our Lives event to speak out about gun violence will be happening all over the nation this weekend. We'll show you the March in Keene. Also, Find out how the Cheshire County Historical Society is making new use of an old campus building. Those stories and more are coming up next week on the show. That's all for this edition of KSE TV. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next week at this same time. We'll see you then and have a good evening.